I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function. This is the word of the Lord. James 1.19 says, Understanding this, my brothers and sisters, you must be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. I want to introduce you in just a moment to a true 2024 James kind of man. I've known Pastor Juan Feliciano for almost 30 years. And during that time, I've watched him in New England in tough ground, sow seeds for Christ and always create a welcoming environment. He is a, a friend who loves Jesus without fear, and someone who will make you feel comfortable, at home, challenged, and desirous to draw closer to Jesus Christ. He is madly in love with his wife, Myra, of 45 years. And they have three amazing sons, John, Melvin, and Jeremy. At this time, it's his first time on campus, so would you please show him what it means to show up at Taylor University, Juan Felicia. I want to talk to you about worship. And uh, we did read scripture from Romans chapter 12, but I want to talk to you about worship. And I know that we had the worship band, and now that I've caught their attention, right? But I want to talk to you about worship. And I want to go back to where that word first comes from, or the first time that we see it in the Bible, which is probably Genesis chapter 22. And in Genesis chapter 22, it is Abraham going up to Mount Moriah to sacrifice his son. And the Bible teaches us that he was with two of his servants. And at a certain moment, he says to his servants, you stay here for I and the lad will go and worship. So when you think about that, You know he wasn't going up there, worship team, he wasn't going up there to sing three songs. He was going up there to worship, to do the will of God, extreme will of God. What God had purposed for his life to do, and he was up there to do the will of God. Worship. It's not enough to talk about the Christian life James says we have to live it. Did you hear that before? I'm sure you did. It's not enough to talk about the Christian life. James says we must live it. And we know the saying, talk is cheap. But it is time for the church of Christ to live out its calling. And so let's take a look today at Romans chapter 1. And it says... I appeal, we we had read it earlier, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers. And another word that you might hear in another version is, I urge you or I beseech you, which tells us that it is extremely important that we do this. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. There's a lot to break down there. But first of all, a living sacrifice. And we know that a sacrifice, and the people of old would know that a sacrifice was something that was killed, something that was put to death. A sacrifice, a living sacrifice. It's contradictory, right? But we are living and dying. Living to God, dying to sin, a living sacrifice, holy, separated for God, 
acceptable to God. That what we do must be acceptable to God. In other words, there are things that are not acceptable, unacceptable. So it has to be acceptable, which is your spiritual worship. ESV says spiritual worship. King James will say reasonable service. And Reina Valera, I speak Spanish, Reina Valera, which is a contemporary with King James, and actually it was written a few years before King James, uh, says culto racional, which means rational service. Culto racional. And so we get a great feeling here from the Apostle Paul that we are worshipers and that we need to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. This is the temple of the Holy Spirit. It is separated for God. It is holy unto God. It is acceptable unto God. It must be presented in an acceptable way. Verse two, it says, so we are living out our Christian life. So if we go back to James, James says, you know, it's not enough to talk about Christian life. We need to live it out. And so here Paul is giving us the instructions that we need to be able to live out that Christian life. And when we look at verse 2, right? And before I go into that, I want to go back to the beginning of Romans. And I think it's important that we mention three aspects at the beginning of Romans chapter 1. Number 1, Paul says, brings forth greetings to the Romans and how he desires to be with them. How he is longing to go there and visit them and spend time with them to be able to minister to them. But Paul is thinking, I'm going to minister to you, but at the same time, you're going to be ministering to me. This is a mutual thing. And today, I'm ministering to you, but let me tell you, ye all have ministered to my life. My life has increased spiritually and in my walk with God because of my encounters with you. Every time I see you guys and I see young faces and I see people who are passionate with God, that gives me a greater sense of hope for our future here in the United States and throughout the world. So we are mutually edifying one another. And Paul knew that. And the interesting thing about Paul is the fact that Paul, if you, if you will, he grew up at the feet of Gamaliel, which means that he was probably educated at the time in one of the Ivy League schools. He was well educated, and yet he knew enough to know that in the Lord, we minister to people, but people minister to us. It is reciprocal. There is reciprocity in our ministry. And I'm telling you this, you guys are going to, some of you are seniors. Next year, you're going to be going out. Or this year, 2024, you're going to be going out. You're going to be ministering to people. And you're going to remember the words of that guy, the Puerto Rican guy that came from Springfield, Massachusetts, that said to me or said to us that when I minister it's reciprocal. I am being ministered to, and that's what you're going to encounter as you minister to people. You are going to bless, and you are going to be blessed as well. And so that's, why the, that's how Paul begins the book of Romans, and then he goes on to say that we need to live this Christian life because the, the righteous shall live, uh, there's that word again, shall live by faith. It's a life of faith, we don't know exactly how it's all going to pan out. We begin the process. We don't know exactly. God gives us enough light to take, you know, light unto my feet is thy word. He gives us enough light to take one step. He doesn't give us a beam of light so that we can see all the problems, all the difficulties, all the things that we're going to encounter along the way. We go and we deal with it and we work through it as we encounter every situation. But I'll tell you this, as you do so, your, your, your life is going to be edified. And you're going to look back and think about that time. And you're going to be able to say, the Lord 
brought me through. I am here today because God has brought me through. And I am greater, I am greater, I have a greater increase in my faith because of that circumstance that I had to go through. And so, the righteous shall live by faith. And then Paul goes on to say, this is very important before we get to verse two. It's important to see this. And then he says that, then he speaks about the wrath of God on the unrighteous. And the result of adamant unrighteousness leads to being given up to a reprobate mind. If it's King James, it's gonna say reprobate. If it's uh, ESV, it's gonna say a debased mind. And what is a reprobate mind, a debased mind? It's simply this, a mind that does not work. That's what we're gonna encounter in our world today. A mind that does not work. If you listen to the news and you hear some of the outlandish things that are taking place today, you say to yourself, where did that come from? Who thinks like that? Where did that come from? And who thinks like that? And so Paul goes on to verse two to tell us. He says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern or distinguish what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. The good the acceptable and perfect will of God. I need to tell you that God's will doesn't necessarily line up with my thinking. It doesn't necessarily line up with my ambitions. And that's good. Because remember, it's acceptable, it's good, it's perfect. And as far as I know, there's nothing better than perfect. God's will for our lives is perfect. What he wants for you is perfect. I was sharing my testimony last night about my transition because I did not go straight into pastoring. I wanted to. That was my plan. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to go straight into the ministry. But God had it another way. And my mom, who is very instrumental, has always been very instrumental in my life, who is 100 years old and about to turn 101. Yes. Very instrumental in my life. My mom, she uh, enrolled me in college because I went on a one-year stint to the Dominican Republic as a missionary for my, with my church. I was at a Methodist church at the time, and I would consider it a Methodistal church, charismatic church. And uh, we went from, uh, I, I went for a whole year in the Dominican Republic. When I come back, my mom had already enrolled me in college. And to make a long story short, I ended up in education. It's where God wanted me to be. And I actually spent 20 years teaching uh, in Puerto Rico, in Springfield, Massachusetts, in the state of Massachusetts, but uh, also in Connecticut, in Hartford, Connecticut. So I, I, I was exposed to, the, to teaching for, for 27 years because I was bivocational for a while. But what I want to get to is that all of a sudden I knew I had a calling at the age of 17. And then all of a sudden I find myself with one son in, uh, in Pioneer Valley Christian School and, and paying money to have him go there. And another one who is at STIC, which is Springfield Technical Community College, and another one in Puerto Rico who was studying also at the university. And God said to me, this is the time. This is the moment. Now, in, rationally, it didn't make sense at that moment because I, I, I know that I'm not gonna be making the same salary. I know that the things aren't gonna be the same and I'm doing fine right now and I'm working in a state that's yeah, giving me, a, rewarding me quite well for what I'm doing and, and, and it just didn't make sense. But God's will is perfect. 
God's will is perfect. And, and to make a very long story short, I can just tell you, for instance, that one of the great things that happened was that I, 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 I resigned. I did, not, I, I did not retire. A lot of people think that I retired from the educational system. I resigned. And one of the great things that happened was that my son, the, the smallest one, he was able to get a scholarship for the school that he was going for. 100% scholarship, completely paid for, and God just began to provide and make a way. His will is perfect for your life. You cannot outdo God. So when you're doing God's will, it might not uh, line up with your thinking, and it might not line up with your ambitions, but ambitions are only ambitions. All those things that you think you can acquire and get, folks, you're gonna leave them behind someday. The Bible teaches us, surely we came into this world with nothing, surely we're gonna leave without anything. So it's just ambition. And so, a reprobate mind, I mentioned that, verse two, this is why you see some of the things that are happening. And so, David Jeremiah, past. Dr. David Jeremiah, he looks at this verse, at renewing of our minds as a transfusion. In other words, a blood transfusion. You're, you're, you're taking the old, you're gonna put new in it. Uh, you're taking out the bad, you're gonna put in good. Uh, negative, you're gonna replace it, supplant it with positive. And for those of you who plan on going into mental health, Philippians chapter four, verse eight is of utmost importance because it tells us that whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, whatever is excellent, if there is something that is worthy of praise, think on these things. In other words, transfusion your thinking into these things. Whatever is true, honorable, just, pure, lovely, commendable, excellent, worthy, and worthy of praise. Think on these things. This is renewing our minds in these things. Do not conform to the ways of this world, but rather be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let us continue. Verse three. For by grace, <clears throat> for by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than what he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. A lot of people may think that that verse is kind of like a rebuke for you not to be puffed up and to be filled with pride. It's not that. It's what, it, what, it's, what it's actually saying is you have to think level-headed, soberly, No where your strengths are, know where your weaknesses are. Know what is your calling and what is someone else's calling. And that's basically what that verse is telling us. If I go to next verse, and interestingly enough, according to the faith that God has assigned, a certain degree of faith that God has assigned to each and every one of us. And we will see that in our walk. We're gonna see some people that have tremendous faith and, uh, you know, we, we look up to that and we would aspire to have that kind of faith as well. But we will see different levels of faith. As in one body, we have many members and the members, this is verse four, do not all have the same function. Verse five, so we though many are one body in Christ and individually members one of another. I love this verse, Pastor, because it speaks about the diversity of the body of Christ. The body of Christ is diverse. And God looks at us in our diversity. But God doesn't look at us in the diversity that man sees diversity because man sees what's on the Outside, God sees what's on the inside. 
and he sees our diversity and he is expecting each and, every, each and every one of us to be fulfilling the role that he has called us to do. And so when God sees diversity, he's, he's truly judging by the content of our character. We can say that a lot here today in the United States, in these United States of America, but truly we are looking at people from the outside. We're not looking from the inside. And the only way we can see from the inside is to spend time with them. Spend time, quality time. Not just a meet and greet, quality time with people. And that is how we learn about my brother. That's how I learn about my sister. That's how I learn about other people groups. That's how I learn, spending time. But we don't, we should not judge uh, from the outside. We should be like God and take a look at the character. God truly, uh, God tr truly judges by the content of our character. And there's another part of this verse that's very important where it says we need each other. I need to tell you that we are independent to each other. We are an independent, interdependent, sorry, interdependent body. We need each other. Pastor Greg has so many things going on here. I noticed that, of course. And uh, so many things that are happening here. But he depends on all the different parts to do what they have to do. And this is how we complement the body of Christ. And this is what these two verses are referring to, verses four and five. Now, I wanna take a quick look at verses six, seven, and eight because we're coming close to an end here, but six, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them if prophecy in proportion to our, in, to our faith, if service in serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. And when I look at this, Pastor, what comes to my mind is life less complicated. Life less complicated because everyone is doing what they need to do. There are too many pastors today in America, because I have, I, I've seen it, that are jack of all trades. They're doing just about everything. The body of Christ, we need to know where we stand and what we need to do. And we need to fulfill the position, the role that God has given each and every one of us. And that's why I say, when I look at this passage, the, word, the, 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 the phrase that comes to me is life less complicated. And now, I'm gonna give you an assignment. And that assignment is that you're gonna read the rest of chapter 12 of the book of Romans. Because I've always said that if we were to come to a circumstance in this country where we don't even have the word of God and we're picking and choosing from scraps out there. I mean, we haven't gotten there. Well, I, 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 I believe we're still far away from that. But, you know, picking and choosing scraps and of, of the word of God. If there's a passage in the Bible that would be very helpful to me to know what I need to do in my walk with, in faith with the Lord would be chapter 12. Now, having said that, you're going to have an assignment to finish reading chapter 12. But I want to say this because this is very important before I finish. Part of that worship is also rest. And Pastor Greg and I have spoken about this. Part of that worship is rest. Rest is very important. You know that Forbes magazine recently says that rest helps heal your body. It promotes mental health. Rest will boost your creativity. It increases productivity. 
It promotes well-being. It reduces stress. It improves mind and strengthens relationships. All these things are benefits of rest. And what, do I, what I want to tell you with this is that sometimes you find yourself so caught up in what you're doing, you need to step back. And every time you do step back and rest and get, get your mind off what you're doing, you realize that you recharge. I have been ministering now for 27 years. Uh, 28, we're going on 28 and uh, we'll probably be hitting the 30 mark too. But what I wanna say is the reason I am standing today is because I've been able to understand that there are moments that we have to rest. And I've been uh, pretty uh, judicious, if you will, on choosing those moments. And I'm, and I'm telling you as, as young people, you know, rest is very important. Get that rest. Take care of your bodies. Remember, this is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And it's separated for God. It's holy unto God. It is acceptable unto God. You are called to worship. To worship God is to carry out his will for your life. And singing songs is part of worship, of course. Because as I sing those songs, I am praising God. I am praying to God. I am even having supplications to God in the process. Yes, the songs are part of worship as well. But everything that you do for the Lord, his will is your worship. It's your reasonable service. Continue to be people of reasonable service. May the Lord richly bless you.